<laughs> yes, um, the idea of opening a museum or having a museum at Göttingen University is obviously not new. Um, so um, when the Forum Wissen will open um, next year, um, we are cottoning on or maybe taking up uh, a tradition that uh, roots back to the founding of Göttingen University, of course, um, and then the founding of the academic museum, uh, the Königlich Akademisches Museum um, on campus in, just a second, in the year 1773. Uh, as I'm, probably everybody knows here, uh, I'm uh, almost, uh, I'm always uh, overwhelmed uh, when I stand here at this place because this is actually where uh, the academic museum probably was, as you can see in the famous uh, Biesemann um, image of uh, 1816, I think. Um, so the building attached to Paulina Kirche you see in the background uh, was uh, the academic museum here in Göttingen. Um, uh, and uh, Johann Friedrich Blumbach was, of course, uh, the first Oberaufseher of this museum, first director of this museum. So um, the museum itself, as you probably know, um, roots into the collections of um, people like Büttner and Uffenbach. Um, and there was going to be a big Uffenbach uh, exhibition opening next month here at the art collection. Um, and then Blumenbach was uh, the one to systemize this uh, collection and actually uh, move uh, all the, the, multi uh, the multiple objects in these collections um, and to house them actually in uh, an academic museum on campus. Um, as you also all know, uh, all will know, um, the collections of Göttingen University today uh, have grown over 300 years um, and they have spread out of the campus. So we have like a decentralized landscape of collections all over campus. Depending on how you count them, it's um, yeah more than 30 uh, locations where they are, institutes and faculties uh, are across campus are involved. And um, there's more than 70, around about 80 sub-collections um, throughout every, all, all of the disciplines of the university. Now in this process of dissemination of the collections from uh, the, the academic museum as it existed until the year 1840, uh, the building on the left side uh, plays an important role. Um, this uh, building, the Naturhistorisches Museum, uh, was uh, conceived in the 1870s and then opened in 1877-78 um, to be um, uh, the Natural History Museum on campus, housing especially uh, the zoology collection, the geological collections and um, ethnographical collections in the beginning. And what we witness here is like um, a first uh, physical step of moving the collections and giving them more room, um, more space in a deliberate um, museum building. So what the University of Göttingen has been doing um, over the past few years is um, refurbishing this building because it definitely had to be refurbished um, after having been used as a zoological institute, especially from the 1920s until present, it was like the Alte Zoologie. So other collections had moved out over time um, and spread out across campus. And um, only the zoological collection remained within the building and it turned into an, uh, an institute um, to serve the large amounts of students, especially after World War I and World War II. Um, this building is at the moment being refurbished um, and it's right next to the station. That's where we're going to go um, after, after dinner. Um, in this um, prospect of the architects um, from today, um, what we see is uh, the historical main building um, facing the front of the street of Berliner Straße, um, which has been refurbished as a, as a historical monument um, and will be returned in its structure, especially its ex uh, internal structure, back to the layout and ground plan design of the, um, um, the building as it was built. So with large galleries uh, for the museums on three stories um, above each other. <coughs> I have to breathe <laughs> through this mask, yeah. 
So um, what you see here on top is uh, the new roof uh, that is um, going to be on the building. Uh, so if you compare it with the, or that is already on the building, that's the old roof. This is the new roof that will house um, climate control, climate uh, tech, uh, technology on the, on the roof, um, turning all the galleries into uh, modern museum rooms uh, with uh, special climate conditions and lighting and uh, for museum use. Um, and what you see from the back is that the building as it had been before in the 1920s and 1970s um, is uh, extended by modern parts, uh, by modern additions to the building. Um, a central unit in the, in the middle that connects to the, uh, to the exhi uh, exhibition spaces in the three stories. And to the left and the right, the two courtyards um, are roofed with a glass housing. Um, to serve as on the left hand side a, a cafe and um, yeah recreational space of the museum on the right hand side um, there's going to be uh, facilities uh, you will get to know when you uh, enter the museum um, the most interesting part maybe and that is what structurally added to the museum is in the basement so um, down here um, that was not me. <laughs> um, down here in the basement, uh, new storages have been built uh, and uh, will serve as professional museum storages um, for, in the first place, the zoological collection that will return to the museum and which is um, at the moment during construction, obviously not in the building. So about 50% of these storages will be zoological collection. And the other 50% um, collections from all over campus that are at the moment in well kind of precarious situations and kind of brought to the new storages um, within the next year. Forum Wissen is going to be probably uh, the name for the whole site, so the whole building. Um, but what I'm going to talk about uh, today and what is uh, sort of like the initial phase that is going to open the next year is uh, the first two stories so the ground floor and above it the first floor and the galleries in the historical main building and not this part the north wing which will be uh, refurbished over the next few years so there's going to be a construction site for quite some considerable time over the next years right next to the open museum um, but which will develop the whole site into a, a larger conference and also um, yeah, a publicity venue, I would say, for the university. Um, as I said before, um, this is the ground plan of the basement uh, of the building. Now, this has been uh, highly uh, reworked and modernized. Um, so, as you can see in the two courtyards, these red uh, this red area, this is a new addition to the building um, of the large storage rooms here, here, this one, and then there's smaller storage rooms in the old building too. Um, these uh, serve for different climate conditions, um, especially for uh, paper objects, for example, metal objects, uh, wet specimens. Um, so uh, we will have uh, yeah, modern storage facilities in the building and that is kind of, for me, uh, coming from collections management uh, uh, in, in campus, one of the essential assets of the whole building as an infrastructure that will serve uh, collections all over campus because attached to uh, the storages here, um, we will have workshops for preparation, zoological preparation in-house. There's a restorator's workshop down here, so we will have two restorators working in the house and a digitization workshop that will be right next to storages. So, so uh, you can imagine in the basement, we will have a workflow of um, managing, uh, bringing in collection objects, um, taking care of them, restoration, conservation, preparation, and digitizing the, uh, the material to bring it online. I will talk a little more about that later. Um, let's start on the ground floor. And what I would like to do in the next few minutes is um, give you a preview of what um, the museum is designed to be like, um, a preview to its concept, but also a preview to the to the rooms and the aesthetics and how we uh, develop them, 
because what you're going to see later on on the tour uh, is like the raw naked rooms which are fin finished the galleries um, have been reworked mostly and are ready to be um, uh, the, the, the exhibition is ready to be installed but that hasn't begun yet so you will be seeing empty rooms and I will try to fill that for your inf uh, for your image imagination and take along on your trip um, the ground floor plan, um, you will enter the building from the front entrance. Um, that is one um, thing that also shows uh, one of the key um, uh, yeah, aims of the whole uh, project is to integrate um, society and to, be, to invite everybody to come into this museum. Um, the, the center of the porticus is going to be cut out so you can walk into the museum on ground level uh, with your pram or wheelchair or, what, or um, you'll have an even surface to, to walk into the building, uh, come into this uh, distributing vestibule area and uh, the green spaces here are the cafe, um, there's a cash desk although there won't be any charge. Um, it will be free of charge for the next five years, the museum um, and facilities uh, in the back. And then very important, the space down here, the left hand side of the ground floor is going to be space for temporary exhibitions, 360 square meters that will be um, exhibitions in a biannually um, or two exhibitions per year changing program. Um, exhibitions developed here on campus and also exhibitions touring Germany that will be um, guests in the house. And then when you start as a visitor here, uh, these first three rooms I would like to present to you a little in detail because they are the prologue to the whole concept to, of, the, of the exhibition. They sort of initiate three threads you can follow as a visitor when walking through the exhibition. And um, last but not least, there's this room, very prominent, um, facing the, uh, the station and uh, on, the, on the ground floor, very easily accessible. Uh, this room, we call it a, a free space, Freiraum, um, for experimental exhibitions that might even come from teaching, might come from research projects, um, might be of a short term, just a few weeks, maybe sometimes half a year, presented right here down. Um, in the uh, yeah, easily accessible um, ground floor. So let's uh, turn to the three rooms, um, or just maybe as a, a advert break in between. Um, Centrale Custodie here at the university, that's where I work as a collections manager, um, has been working on the overall concept um, since 2013. Um, and in 2014 was joined by uh, the Expo Norton, uh, a professional um, curator and his agency in, um, in Berlin. So uh, Joachim Bauer wrote the, the rough concept and then the fine concept for the whole exhibition and as a prof museum professional uh, teamed up with uh, Centrale Custodie as a curatorial team of seven or eight people developing all the galleries and the concept for the exhibition. And then in 2017, this curatorial team was joined by um, Atelier Brückner from Stuttgart, the scenographers who are putting everything into place in the room, planning the design of the exhibition, colors, light, uh, showcases, and all of that. And that is very much on the way. So everything is in production at the moment. And uh, we're just waiting to be able to move in with the pre-produced showcases um, and lighting and everything. Just as a comparison from the um, design process, this is what this room is going to look like kind of in a visual visualization. Uh, this is the room laboratory, uh, the gallery laboratory, um, and that's the state it was in just a few months ago as a, a raw building. Um, Laboratory is maybe one of the central uh, rooms of knowledge because rooms of knowledge is uh, the title of the exhibition. So what we're doing is we're presenting um, uh, a narrative in this uh, exhibition that is not focused on chronology or not focused on 
disciplines, um, but we, it is cross-disciplinary and it's also, uh, yeah, it, it brings together things from all the 300 years in different contexts. And these contexts are rooms of knowledge production. Um, I'll say a little more about that when we see the whole ground plan of the, um, of the building and of the ex exhibition. Now to start, we're on the ground floor, first room. So here you get your ticket and you start the exhibition. And this is the first room, second room, third room. You can go through, you can choose whichever to take first. But these uh, three rooms or three galleries um, present three paradigms underlying the whole concept. Um, perspectives, practices, and networks. Um, and this is the perspectives room. So um, one of the paradigms is uh, under which the whole exhibition was developed is that everything you look at, everything you encounter um, can be seen from different angles, um, from multiple perspectives, some multi-perspectivity, um, historical perspectives, recent perspectives, academic perspectives, also uh, perspectives non-academic from outside non-academic knowledge attached to objects. Um, and these objects can tell, tell different stories in a way or different stories can be told, uh, taught about these objects. So um, there is gonna be uh, seven head-like uh, figures you will encounter as a visitor when entering the museum um, in a row displayed here, but they will be spread out across the room. And on every, um, on every showcase, you can see a perspective. Um, you'll be able to pick with your smartphone, oops, an audio um, or several audios, three or four audios to every object. And what you will hear is different people talking about these objects and giving their perspective to, um, to an object and we will join different perspectives onto every object. So for example, Socrates here in the middle, um, of course, there's a philosopher you can listen to talking, to, uh, so, uh, talking about Socrates as kind of a founder of modern sciences and the tradition underlying this. And that'll be a, a one minute quick audio that takes you into that perspective on the object. But then what we're displaying is actually not the original Socrates bust from the Valmoden uh, collection here in Göttingen, because that was damaged uh, in a fire um, and can't go on display. So what we did was uh, we created a, th uh, a 3D model of it, and that was printed, uh, printed out in one-to-one -one scale, and then even colored by a restorator to look and resemble um, the original. Um, and it's the restorator who's going to talk in a second perspective about this object um, being a reproduction um, and it's um, being a modern reproduction. And then it's also the, the colleagues from the digital humanities department who actually created the 3D model. And uh, there's gonna be somebody talking about the process of how this object was actually materially uh, produced uh, from the original without touching it uh, into a, an artificial um, reproduction. So this is just one of the seven examples of multi-perspectivity you will get on different objects, objects that are chosen um, very deliberately. This is the head of uh, David Hilbert, um, the bust of David Hilbert that actually was thrown out of the window in 2008 in uh, student protests here in Göttingen was vandalized. Yeah. So why would somebody vandalize a, a bust of David Hilbert? There's a long story behind it, a story we are telling from different perspectives and different people involved in that. This is um, objects from uh, the Akushierhaus um, Geburtsmedizin, um, ethnological object, um, Dorothea Schlötzer bust uh, from the university. And um, what we're opening up here will be uh, the, um, the topic of uh, women in science uh, and, and how women are, yeah, treated in science too. Um, and for example, uh, Professor Beisiegel will give one perspective on this object and why she initiated just recently uh, during uh, her time here at Göttingen University, the Dorothea Schlitzer program to, um, to uh, help women in science. Um, another ethnological object from the 
um, from the Ash Collection and an object from anthropology, from the anthropology, anthropology collections. Um, this is a plaster bust of, a, of an African, an unknown African, um, and a, an object that will serve us to open up the whole um, narrative of um, colonial objects, objects with colonial backgrounds and human remains um, throughout the collections. Um, so, um, an opening room that will open your mindset uh, for different perspectives and different voices uh, in, uh, in the university about the collection objects. The second room is the room of practices. So this is a room, um, just, to, just to say, the principle of picking audios is something you learn in the first room as a, um, as a visitor and which you take along through the exhibition. So there will be audios, perspectives, pickable on um, a lot of objects, uh, more than 90, almost 100 perspectives throughout the exhibition. So um, that will follow up through all the galleries. And it starts here. And what starts here uh, is um, a film track um, showing practices at the university, um, different practices, uh, hands at work, I would say. There's no faces in the videos, um, but what we show is um, all these um, all these aspects of manual work, of routines, um, of, of practically working on knowledge by uh, working on objects in different settings, in laboratory settings, in field settings, in a writing setting, in a reading setting, archaeological settings. Um, and also this will be as a big um, collage in the room with several videos simultaneously, so comparison of different practices um, in comparison of different videos. And these videos um, will reappear throughout the exhibition. So uh, in different contexts, in different galleries, again, there will be screens showing you how knowledge is actually manually <coughs> produced uh, uh, on university campus. And the third room, uh, one of the rooms that I am particularly attached to uh, because I'm um, into the digital design of the, of the exhibition uh, is the room of Verknüpfungen networks uh, in English. Um, so what we're doing here is, or what we're presenting here is kind of a paradigm of everything is connected. Um, knowledge is never like um, solitude, but it's uh, connected globally, worldwide, spatially, um, between people and between places. Um, and what we're going to present here is 11 objects in showcases on two tables and in the middle, a large digital screen with a map of the world. And what you learn here as a, as a visitor is you can actually pick again with your smartphone objects digitally from the showcases, bring them to the table and then send them on their voyage, the voyage they took to come to Göttingen. So uh, it's about the biographies of these objects and how they migrated and eventually ended up in Göttingen or even spread out from Göttingen again. And we're going to tell different stories of migration, migrational biographies of objects uh, in this room. Um, for example, uh, there's objects from the Cook Foster collection, of course, um, as um, expeditions of uh, the uh, 18th and 19th century. Um, there's archaeological objects, there's objects from the uh, uh, Königsberg, um, what's Bernstein in English? Um, <laughs> Amber collections, exactly. Um, and um, there's also going to be objects from the computer museum, um, pioneering objects of networking computers and, uh, and these things. So we're bringing together a diverse variety of material that is in the Göttingen collections and can in 11 examples stand for um, yeah, the, the, the network of things globally and it's getting in a uh, center kind of. Yeah, and also this practice you learn as a visitor, you can pick stuff from showcases uh, and take it along and create an own collection in your smartphone and actually activate these objects again, coming to media stations, you can put your collection, your individual collection that you collected from the showcase on this table and then start into different scenarios um, 
of digital interaction with these objects. So in other galleries, you will be able uh, to sort and order um, objects in, in different aspects of, um, yeah, of even um, scientific uh, taxonomies and this topic. Uh, we will have another um, digital media station where books, which you pick from the showcase, you can there activate and then actually read and uh, flip through the pages um, while the object itself in the showcase, of course, you can't touch, you can't turn the pages. So um, that as a digital service, there will be other media stations where you can, um, that uh, focus on visualization, uh, techniques of drawing and microscopy in, in, in science and so on. And it all accumulates digitally in a, in a collection wall where uh, you bring your own collection from the visit and then you get like around about 40,000 other objects from our collection, which you can also add into your collection. You can browse into like the big world um, beyond the museum and the, the collections that are spread out over campus uh, and you can even collect from them. This is from the design process of this digital layer, it has been called. Um, so you walk up to an object, it's going to be around about 70 objects in the collection, uh, in the um, in the exhibition that you can collect on your way. So you approach a showcase, you can actually pick the object, you bring it to a table and on the table uh, digitally, you can interact with the object. So here's an overview of all the galleries in the first floor, the rooms of knowledge. Um, and we would actually start our the ideal round trip to the to the exhibition starts coming up the staircase here and follows the rooms around and here it ends and this is where the collection wall will be um, as a final big uh, digital scenario. Um, also from the design process these are photographic models that were built um, or actually uh, paper models um, that were built and photographs of these put into the design. So here you can see um, we will start with a room I will talk uh, a little more about, uh, the museum as one room of knowledge. And then, then it goes into Schenke uh, cabinets, uh, the laboratory field as a room, more metaphorically, uh, the, the, the field research, we go out into the field and return from the field. Um, and different fields of research. The desk as a, as a room of knowledge where you create, write, rewrite, rework knowledge um, in writing. Atelier, the gallery about uh, visualization and um, imagery in, in science, uh, hand-drawn photographic imagery, digital imagery until today. Um, Salon is going to be a room about discussion and debates, historical debates, but also a venue for debates today. Uh, the lecture hall is about teaching and the position of being the teacher or being the audience and the involvement of object and teaching collections in this setting. Uh, well, we have here, yeah, me talking, you listening. Um, imagine there will be objects on the table, so it's going to be a lot about um, teaching collections uh, in um, the lecture hall. And behind that kind of as a backstage, uh, a focus on all the um, on all the workshops throughout campus. Uh, so there's gonna be a workshop uh, preparation, restoration and uh, mechanics from physics, which are only three of uh, a lot of examples that we could have taken. So there's gonna be a fourth table in the, back where we will feature other workshops throughout uh, campus. This is kind of where the, the practices uh, culminate uh, in the whole exhibition. And it's a lot about handcraft um, that is behind science, um, or often seen as behind science and uh, kind of invisible. Um, the Holzweg in German, it's more like a, um, uh, an idiom um, for, in English, we would say the blind alley, for example, um, um, the principle of trial and error. So um, how do we create knowledge? Uh, yeah, we also take, um, we, we, we might be misled. We have to try stuff, return back and take a curvy path uh, 
through the creation of knowledge. And alongside this path, there will be examples of projects that are kind of like failed or uh, projects that uh, that kind of got stuck uh, in, in the process uh, uh, that will be on display here. And then uh, one gallery about uh, the, I would say, market value of uh, the, the economics behind science, um, funding of science, and also the, um, the economic value of science. Um, as one big topic here. Um, and the final room of knowledge, uh, we decided to uh, display uh, the, the gallery, uh, the, 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 the library as the, sort of the, 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 the room of storage of knowledge and how is knowledge stored historically. Um, book knowledge will be uh, presented in a big physical tower of books actually, uh, with showcases um, on different editions. Um, and uh, co the collection wall with kind of the digital knowledge uh, accessible uh, in a digital way today. So that's kind of like the quick round course uh, of um, the, the whole exhibition. Um, now, as I know, everybody here in the room is most uh, interested in uh, Blumbach and the Academic Museum. I would like to show you our ideas about um, the museum gallery as the first gallery of uh, the exhibition. Um, and what we do here is where we try to visualize the process of uh, yeah, these masses of objects actually in the uh, um, in, um, late 18th uh, century coming into uh, the Göttingen collections from different uh, regions, from different sources. Um, and we will uh, highlight a few of these objects. So these are original objects in these black boxes. Um, and it's going to be a yeah, rather small amount of objects, um, but uh, we will try to represent uh, the, the multiplicity of objects in the academic uh, museum of uh, the late 18th century. Um, from the planning process, this is the, um, the ground plan of the room. Um, and it's walls alongside. So these are kind of like flipped open like a box. Um, and um, it is kind of a, a, a course around here to follow that um, gets denser and denser um, to, to this point and then continues into the next room of the cabinets um, and kind of the storage of objects in, uh, in storages. Um, to give you an idea which objects we will bring into this room, um, of course, so the, the catalog of the Academic Museum in its uh, second writing um, will be in, in, on display here. Um, we have a, a painting from the uh, arts collection that uh, is part of the uh, Uffenbach founding collection um, of, uh, of the university. Um, then we have a zoological specimen um, from the uh, in, uh, wet specimen. Um, from the 1840s, one of the oldest um, remaining in the zoological collection, uh, and, and Stachelschwein. What's a Stachelschwein in, uh, in English? Ah, okay, thank you. Um, then there's going to be a collection of rings from the uh, Büttner collection um, presented here, um, a herbarium um, specimen um, from the Foster herbarium um, will be on display in this room. Um, we have from the model collection um, uh, a part of a fortress, um, which will be on display here. Um, and maybe as a very prominent object and um, from, the, from the Cook Foster collection, uh, the, this, this feather hat you will probably all know, which will be on display for half a year, the first half year after the opening, and uh, which will be replaced afterwards by another object from the Cook Foster collection. So there's going to be changing in the displays all the time for, cons uh, for conservational measures, but also because uh, we are lending all these objects from the collections on campus and this object we can only show for half a year. Um, from uh, archaeology, there's uh, the rest of a mummy and um, uh, a mask of a mummy, which will be on display in this room. Um, so the whole topic of uh, research on mummies will be present in, in the room. Um, and then we have from the geological collections, um, from uh, the Ash collection, uh, an assembly of, I think it's 24 uh, Malachite uh, 
uh, objects um, in, in one small showcase here, kind of like also displaying the, um, yeah, the, the, the vast amount of geological objects in the, in, uh, in the academic museum um, as it was in the 18th century. Um, and also uh, arrows from the ethnographical collection, so weapons, uh, arrows uh, will be on, on display here. And finally, a collection of uh, medals um, on Louis XIV uh, from the coin cabinet uh, and the archaeolog archaeological collection. So this is sort of the, um, the objects we chose to represent the academic museum in a new museum setting um, and bring them together, together with also the visitor book um, of the museum, which will be on display and opened on different pages uh, at different days uh, in this showcase. So you can actually see who visited uh, the academic museum. Yeah. So there's a big difference, I would say, uh, between what the academic museum was uh, and what the gallery is going to look like. And we're really excited about uh, yeah, opening this gallery and then opening also a dialogue about uh, the, the foundations of uh, the Göttingen collections, uh, maybe also triggered by uh, the, this display and, and um, yeah, display we chose. Okay, um, I would just want to highlight um, at the end, um, that of course the Forum Business is not only a museum, it's going to be a research and te teaching infrastructure, so the objects in the house shall be accessible to the most. Um, for the public, we have an outside of the, um, uh, uh, yeah, we call it a showcase, the collection showcase on the ground floor. Uh, you will be able to walk around and get a glimpse on all the collections on, on campus, like all the 70 of them in columns uh, next to each other um, and we're in the process of uh, designing that so you will be able to walk around and get the panopticum of all the collections spread out of the campus and an overview and the inside of this cubicle is going to be a teaching classroom actually uh, so uh, all these shelves are actually accessible you can take objects out bring them to the table and actually have seminars in the room um, teaching with the objects in presence and um, for the next five years uh, we will develop this infrastructure technologically um, to accompany this research process on the objects um, but we will build that step by step yeah, so what it's all about is also uh, at the roots opening um, the collections. Um, some of you will probably know uh, where this photo was taken and what is inside these boxes. It's just for me a metaphor uh, of opening up the collections, making them accessible, making um, sharing uh, uh, the getting collections with the public. And I mean, we're doing that already with our uh, collections portal, which is online um, and where you find 40,000 objects um, from throughout the university's history digitally with images and metadata, rich metadata online. Um, so we kind of opened uh, the digital museum beforehand. And that is kind of crucial why we did that uh, because all our published data is reusable. It's with persistent links um, and um, with uh, structured metadata in the Lido format and triple IF images. So this is all, and with the principles, with the FAIR principles in, in mind, really reusable digital content. And we are the first reusing it. So all the media I was talking about, picking objects and things, are fed from uh, the collection portal. So it's actually the data curated by the curators in the individual collections that go out, uh, goes out into the portal as published uh, data sets on the objects. And we use exactly these, you pick those identifiers from the showcases and you create a collection of citable and published uh, object data that you take home with you. Um, and the same is for um, the library. <laughs> the library collections, which also go out in the same standard uh, to, the, um, to the web and we use uh, books, manuscripts, uh, archival materials uh, from this portal of the SUV and bring them into the digital applications of the museum in the same way. Um, so in a brief overview, uh, we have the museum CMS, but this museum CMS is directly fed 
from the published collection portal over an API and over the gated sector getting a digitalization centrum's portal over an API. So we're actually reusing this published data in the museum uh, to address the objects in the showcase, in the app and on the media stations. It's all like one uh, source of the material and that feeds from the collection databases and the SUB catalogs. Uh, so the infrastructure, the digital infrastructures behind the collections and the library. So that's it from my side. Um, thank you very much and I'll happy to keep the hands.